that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Tonight's Green Light Maine is sponsored by Pretty Flaherty, willing to think differently. Good evening, I'm your host, Julene Gervais, and welcome to Green Light Maine, the show where two companies from a field of 26 compete each week to move on in the competition and become one step closer to winning the $100,000 prize. We're going to get to our first pitch in just a moment, but I'd like to welcome and introduce our experienced group of judges from around the main business community. First, we have Michael Sheehan from Freddy Flaherty. Thank you so much for being here. Why don't you just tell us what you do? Sure, thank you. It's a privilege to be here. I'm with Freddy Flaherty. I'm chair of the business law group there, which means I have the privilege of working with entrepreneurs on a daily basis of the folks we see here tonight and in the episodes to come. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we have Leah Hurley, who started Kraft. Can you tell us a little bit about Craft? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, Craft is a boutique creative services agency, and I'm an entrepreneur myself. My focus is on creative services, creative production, and communication strategy. Great, thank you so much for being here. We're so happy to have you. And finally, we have Mary Baumgartner from Garen Partners. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes, I'm so happy to be here back again. Yes. Um, and at Garen Partners, I am the Chief Strategy Officer and a partner in the firm. Great. Well, thank you so much. Now it's time for our first pitch. I'd like to welcome Jalux and Zach Taylor. And we were talking about how Jalux lights up all the main lakes and our beautiful coastline. So we're so happy to have you. Thank you. I'm Zach Taylor, the co-founder and co-owner of Jalux. So just last year, 86 million people went boating last year in the U.S., spending $36 billion on boating and boating accessories. However, it's not always just fun. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, Maine is actually the deadliest state in New England, with collisions on fixed objects being one of the deadliest causes. My business partner, Nick, and I, we actually had our own boating incident after enjoying one of the beautiful summer summers and uh, lakes on Maine. We the sun set far too quickly and we had to zip back to our friend's dock. Unfortunately, Nick could not see the dock because of terrible onshore lighting and he bashed right into it. Luckily, no one was hurt and no serious damage was done. But more importantly, we saw an opportunity to make sure it's safer. Nick owned and operated his own mobile marina service and I was a lighting designer in Boston at the time. So we pooled all knowledge together and started creating impact resistant waterproof LED lighting systems. Our flagship product, the LED Dock Bumper, is basically designed as a light fixture designed to the same specifications as a standard dock bumper, so it can take an absolute beating. It has a refracting lens designed to bend light, helping to increase distribution, as well as uh, prisms and reflectors built inside as well. This allows the bumper to actually throw light along the top surface of the dock while illuminating adjacent hazards. Unlike most bumpers today, our bumper is also uh, recyclable as well. The bumper has, was recently awarded Best New Product of the Year by Speed on the Water magazine. Slip owners, as well as marinas with uh, gas docks and transient slips, loves the bumper, and it's marketed at about $27 a foot. The LED dock bands, which you see here, is a great alternative to the bumper. We mount that to the underside of the dock, illuminating the water, this is a much more cost-effective option for larger marinas and restaurants on the water. The price is about $11 per foot. Just last year, our standard revenue for commercial projects was about $10,000. As Gelux names continue to grow in the marine industry, we have been consulted by some of the largest manufacturers and contractors to bid out projects. Uh, currently, one of the largest projects that we bid out has gone up to $187,000 for lights alone. After performing first-hand market research across the country, we found a very significant portion of customers, interested customers, do not have power on their docks. So with the help of Greenlight, we are looking to develop our own sustainable solar power system. This will allow our product to be much more of an off-the-shelf retail item, great for the average homeowner, especially us Mainers, you know, the, the do-it-yourselfers. So please, Help Maine diversify its portfolio and invest in us because you can see making sure it's safer is a bright idea. 
Nice job. Thank you so much. That's Thank you. definitely a good story of turning a negative into a positive. Thank you. So, Mary, why don't we start with you with the questions? Do you have any key competitors who are offering a similar product? Uh, right now, there's one competitor uh, that's basically just integrating your standard rope light inside of this clear bumper. So you get these hot spots, and it's hardly a bumper. They call it a cushion, but it doesn't offer much protection for your dock, let alone your boat. So the answer is no. Can I add a follow-up question? Yes. Sure. Do you have IP protect? Do you have protection or patents that mean that it would be harder for a competitor to Most enter? definitely. For the bumper, we actually have two patents, one for the design and another one for the process in which it is made. And then we have two other patents for the bands as well as the process in which we make uh, all of our electronics sealed and waterproof. OK. Leah, how about you? Um, do you have an estimate on what that price point would look like for that solar power piece? Yes, we do. Actually, our team of engineers has started to develop it. And what's really unique is we're not reinventing the wheel. We're actually taking pre-manufactured components and just assembling in a way that makes it unique to us. So uh, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We haven't done a full design or value engineering process, but it will only increase the bottom line for the customer about 10 to 20 percent. So very reasonable. Great. OK, Michael. Sure, because you know when I saw that there, I said, boy, that would be great because we mm -hmm. have a dock on a lake, and it would be nice to find at night. But then right. I said, I'm going to need like a 300-foot extension cord. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it, do you think the industrial or the commercial mm -hmm. is a stronger market than the residential? Is that why you're focused there and not on that solar thing? Because I looked at it and I said, that'd be great, but I. Exactly. So um, there's multiple aspects. Mm -hmm. One, it's much easier to reach out to uh, one. Of the, we're working in conjunction with one of the largest dock manufacturers in the okay. US right now. So they ship us orders for or customers that are interested in products. And we zip them out, you know, $187,000 lighting purchase. I mean, we would have to sell a lot of individual residential lighting projects. OK. Sorry, I got to cut <laughs> no you off, but we got to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're getting free legal advice from our sponsor, Freddie Flaherty. So don't go away. Stay with us. Greenlight Maine would like to thank the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, the Maine DECD, helping businesses and communities prosper. When starting up my business, O oh Oysters, I was awash in legal questions and concerns. But the Pretty Flaherty team made sure that O oh Oysters is built on a strong legal foundation so I can focus on serving the best Maine oysters anywhere, anytime. At Pretty Flaherty, we partner with our clients to pursue innovation. Our business group is passionate about providing strategic legal guidance to entrepreneurs like Lucas through every stage of business development. Pretty Flaherty is a proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine. Are you trying to increase sales? At Dream Local Digital, we've been helping businesses using Facebook, Google, and other online tools for over eight years. We're experts at helping small businesses because we work with them nationwide. Dream Local publicizes the important part of me and what I stand for and what Archers is about. We'd love to help you grow your business as well. Give us a call today. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine, and we are so thankful to have Pretty Flaherty on board this year as a sponsor. And tonight we are going to have a conversation with Michael Sheehan from Pretty Flaherty. And this is such a great opportunity to get some legal advice for our contestants and even our audience. So thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Yes, and so you are the chair of the Business Law Group. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that means? Sure. So I'm with Pretty Flaherty, which is a regional law firm. Our offices in Maine are in Augusta and Portland. I'm in the Portland office. And in the business law group, we work with businesses of all sizes. Uh, as relevant here, we work with small companies and startup companies on protecting their intellectual property, licensing agreement, taxes, raising capital, uh, shareholder agreements, and finding space. The whole sort of issues that you confront when you're starting a business and then as you grow your business and you become successful. Nice. Okay, let's talk about, you know, the startups mm -hmm. and your launchpad program. Correct. And what what's just tell us about how a new company gets involved with that. Sure. So we started the launchpad program a couple of years ago because we're, you know, we're passionate about small businesses and the energy that folks bring like the folks that are going to be on the show uh, tonight. 
And, you know, we started that because we think it's important to get legal advice sort of from the uh, get-go. So it's a complementary uh, program in terms of getting your organization uh, formed and started and talking to a lawyer and getting set with a lawyer and establishing that relationship right at the beginning. And sometimes would you say that when someone's just starting out, they think, oh, what do I need a lawyer for at this stage of the game, right? So maybe a lot of people don't right. seek advice until it's too late. Some people <laughs> don't seek advice until it's too late. Uh, and just, you know, to have your team sort of formed from the beginning so that people know you every step of the way and can help uh, along the way. You should have an attorney, you should have an accountant, mm -hmm. and you should have a banker or a financial advisor to sort of steer you as you go down that road. Because let's face it, for most folks, it's kind of the first time down the road. Sure, absolutely. And let's switch gears a little bit now and talk about, you know, the state of Maine. And mm -hmm. you do, you work with so many businesses. Mm -hmm. Can you t tell us how are things going from what, from your business perspective mm -hmm. to what you're seeing what's happening in the state? You know, I'm very optimistic about the direction that our state is headed in. Mm -hmm. We're, we, because it's such a beautiful state, because of our resources, and because it's such a wonderful place to live and a great place to bring up a family, we attract a lot of talent. A lot of, first of all, there's a lot of homegrown talent. And then a lot of folks uh, come to Maine because it is such a, a, a great place to live and, and to raise a family. And they have ideas. And it, it's amazing to us and my colleagues, the sort of the variety of ideas that people have. And it's like, wow, never thought of that. And, and the passion that they bring and bringing these ideas along. Well, no, not everything succeeds, but enough succeed that I, I think we're well suited. Excellent. That sounds good. I mean, and we could talk about this all day, but time is winding down. So I want to get one last question oh, sure. in. So what would be one tidbit of advice that you could give a new company about moving forward? Like if there was something that you wanted them to take away from this show, what would it be? Find yourself a lawyer and get that person on and make sure it's a person that you can talk to and you sense a rapport with. That's very important because this person, another word for lawyer is yeah. counselor. And that's, that's what we like to think that we do. We provide that counsel, and you can use that every step of the way. So if it's not quite right from the beginning, maybe switch lawyers within the firm or talk to somebody there that- Talk to somebody there. You need help. We're on Pretty.com. You can find the Business Law Group. You can find my very talented colleagues. There'll be someone who can help you. All right, well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. And we'll look forward to talking to you as the season goes on. Perfect. So we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back and we're gonna do our second pitch and how you combine technology with your garden. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Lori Lachance, president of Thomas College. Our graduate and undergraduate programs prepare you for success in your personal and professional life and for leadership and service in your community. I know firsthand the value of a Thomas degree. My Thomas MBA completely changed the trajectory of my career, giving me opportunities I would never have had without it. Thomas College provides a great education that is personal, relevant, affordable, and guaranteed. What strikes me most about Forevermark as a woman is the beauty of the diamond. When you place that Forevermark diamond on your finger, you can literally see it from across the room. It really has brilliance. I know when I show somebody a Forevermark that they're getting shown the best. You know that the color is always going to be in a range that's going to look beautiful and that you're never going to have a cut that's not going to explode light back at you. Make sure that my jewelry comes from days. For more information about the presenters and panelists on all the Greenlight Main shows, visit greenlightmain.com. Welcome back to Greenlight Main. We all know small businesses are the backbone of Maine's economy, and this show is really a great platform for businesses to move their companies to the next level, which brings us to tonight's second pitch. We are so happy to have Grow Joe here, and I'd like to welcome Jared Pinkham. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jared Pinkham from Grow Joe, and we are building an open, connected hardware and software platform for small-scale indoor growers. So there is a huge surge in indoor gardening right now that's being fueled by green-thumbed millennials, organic and vertical gardening trends, and the overall desire to have fresh, locally produced food, herbs, and medicines. This is a $50 billion market within the next six to seven years. And just the smart gardening sector is poised to be right around $1.2 within the next two years. 
And we've learned that there's over 2 million of these small-scale growers in this country right now, and the thousands more attempt every single week. And these guys and gals are spending between ten dollars to $25,000 just on initial startup. However, the stat that you normally don't hear is that still 70% of these new growers fail. And that's because indoor gardening can be pretty complex. If you can imagine for a second that you had thirty dollars to $40,000 of plants sitting in flower pots in a room somewhere, and for that next growth cycle, you had to make sure that nothing bad happened to them. This is a fickle microclimate. And these guys can't just rely on Mother Nature. They need to manage everything themselves because one simple mistake could cost these guys their entire garden. And for some growers, like legal cannabis growers, they even need to deal with regulatory compliance and tracking environmental conditions in order to keep up with certain certifications. It's a lot to worry about. And it's easy to see why so many of these new growers end up failing. Well, at Grojo, we have a mission to not only help these new growers succeed, but to give experienced growers the peace of mind and tools that they need to thrive in this industry. And we're using technology, such as wireless sensors, connected hardware, and machine learning as a means to achieve that goal. And this is our first product, the Grojo Core. Now, the Core continuously monitors all the critical environmental conditions and systems, and not only allows the grower to check in remotely, but create automation alerts around that data as soon as it comes in. So if there ever is a problem, they can receive a text message alert and take action immediately. We also have a proprietary camera system on the device that does motion-based security and Grojo branded time-lapse video of the entire growth cycle that they can share socially. And in addition, we provide tips and suggestions to growers to help them optimize their environment based on our open community data. Now we've done some market testing with Grojo, and we had over 500 people sign up to be part of our beta program in less than two weeks. And we plan to sell Grojo directly to our customers, made in Maine, with a reoccurring revenue stream and our data and alerting software platform for more professional growers. A grant such as this would allow us to cover the cost of initial tooling and manufacturing. We have recently won the Microsoft BizSpark Award, and paired with additional money from this show would allow us to deliver the go-to intelligent gardening platform for small-scale growers. Thank you. Nice job. And this is very relative to what's going on in Maine and in various parts of the country. So Mary, why don't we start our first question with you? What would a complete installation of a grow just system cost? Well, we've got about, uh, MSRP is going to be right around $1,200. So this is a plug and play system. Um, it integrates with all the equipment that's already inside of their grow room. You put it on your wall, you turn it on, it's going to want your uh, credentials for your wireless network, user information, and you're ready to go that easy. How about you? What kind of data security protocols do you have in place or in development? Well, one of our co-founders um, is a security architect for Martins Point, um, which has allowed us to, uh, I'm not too sure what the protocols are, but it was a big concern for our customers that security was our major, major issue. Yeah. And that's why we brought in a third co-founder, because it was just so important to our community. OK, Michael, how about you? So I assume you measure things like temperature, humidity, dryness in the soil, whatever. Is there anything sort of proprietary about any of that? Anything that would stop like a huge chain manufacturer, if this takes off, from flooding the market with ones at $600 instead of 12 Well, um, yeah, potentially, yeah. Um, you know, There's a lot of products out there. Um, that are $2,000, $3,000 right now. We're looking to help the small-scale grower because those commercial solutions are just too expensive. Um, so we're bringing it down. Yes, possibly something could be smaller, faster, cheaper in, in a few years, but we are trying to be that smaller, faster, so cheaper you're company. To now, to, yes, to, to yeah. the established okay. market. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay, nice job. And we got to take a break, but we'll be right back and we're going to hear from our judges what they liked, what they didn't like, and they're going to work it all out. So please stay with us. Furniture for Greenlight Maine is provided by Thomas Mosher Furniture, handmade American furniture since 1972. For almost 25 years, Maine Biz has been providing business news, information, and analysis for business owners and C level executives in Maine, from Fort Kent to Kittery. Maine Biz serves the decision makers of Maine across multiple channels, including its flagship print digital publication, website, events, daily report, real estate insider, and weekly newsletter. Let Maine Biz help your business succeed. Inform, engage, connect.
In 1972, Tom Moser committed his life's work to craft and four decades later employs 70 fine craftsmen and women in our shop in Auburn, Maine. With showrooms and customers from coast to coast and numerous awards and accolades, Tom has firmly established himself as an entrepreneurial tour de force and has proven that a life doing what you love is indeed possible. This year's winner of Greenlight Maine will win this handmade Thomas Moser beacon box and $100,000. Broadcast facilities provided by NESCOM, the New England School of Communications at Husson University. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We have heard two outstanding pitches tonight, and this is such an important part of the show because this is where our judges get to hash it all out and talk about what they liked and what they didn't like. So, Mary, let's start with you. It's a tough one, and to have them both be in the lighting category but so different in what they're trying to do makes it difficult to figure out how to evaluate them kind of head on. I think that's right, I, I, and they both seem to have such amazing potential. Okay, there's nobody else in the dock space. They've got the intellectual property protection, so nobody else can really get in this space. And then you've got you know the Grojo folks with all that uh, sort of taking that available technology and packaging it together in a very useful way. Yeah, and both charting unknown territory Correct. in terms of the dock lighting, mm -hmm. what that's going to do environmentally and experientially, right. and then obviously. You know, the legal marijuana market is emerging. Right. I mean, that would make like Grojo sort of a home run. Yep. Because that's such a, a, a valuable or expensive uh, crop, for lack of a better word. Yep. It would worry me a little bit, probably in both cases, but maybe Grojo more, that because it's an open source system, because there are already people in the space doing it just for bigger and, you know, bigger enterprises at a bigger cost. Do they see the opportunity, if Grojo really takes off, to swoop in and just leverage their existing distribution channels and brand awareness? And that, that was kind of exactly a, 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 the concern I have with Grojo is, OK, so right now, they're like the upstart, and everybody else is like 2,000 or 3,000. They've got this super useful product at 1,200 bucks. But if that starts to gain traction, that's exactly the worry I would have, is that one of those big companies goes in and just goes right underneath them. I think it's interesting to see how um, Jellix has grown. You know, mm. it feels like they've got a lot of big contracts out there. And you, know, you had asked the question, I think, when we were chatting with them about why they'd be concentrating on the residential market, which I think is where the investment for the solar would come in. Yep. I don't know if we know, is there an opportunity for the commercial? Is that important to commercial? Because all their big contract dollars that are sitting out in bids appear to be more in the commercial space. They are, and I think what we learned during the commercial was that you know it's the residential has some better margins, but also some ability to sort of standardize the process and just make right. a bunch of stuff and get it out to West Marine or one of the other vendors and have it on the shelf yep. and smooth out between those big contracts. Right, and, and not have it all be custom orders, kind of right. an off-the-shelf product. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice in that category if you could get a West Marine contract. If you could get like yeah, anything, yeah, anything uh, like that. Um, Although but, I worry that though those consumer like me having more of the products out there in varied environments and scenarios just seems to me like it could create a lot of trouble mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and then, you know to go back to the grow Joe. I mean, if they if you know if they were successful or while they were successful. I mean, don't forget, I mean, there's a lot to be said for being the first in the space and having a quality product. So when you're, you know, when you're selling something like, you know, legal cannabis that's going to command a premium price, you know, you may pay, and in the view of the margins that are available there, whether the thing is $1,200 or $800 isn't going to matter to you if it's really, you know, doing what you want it to do right. and helping you produce a quality right. uh, crop. And that, that would be the same for any kind of uh, produce or or, or, or vegetation or anything you were growing. One question I wish I'd thought to ask when we were chatting with them was about their direct-to-consumer choice. Mm. Um, it's an interesting decision in this space to be selling it on their own, which has lots of implications in terms of marketing costs as well as support on the back end. Um, I guess with the analytics, that's probably part of what they've built into their model. But I wish I'd asked more about why direct-to-consumer. Yeah, and that could work if you get a, if you get the fan base, right? I mean, that's what you guys know about. Not the fan base, but the loyal customer yep. base. Yep. 
But it's a lot of one-time purchases, so you've got to well, spend a lot true. of money to get out right. there and get your brand well known and you know marketed and yep. influencers, and that yep. requires some investment probably just to get yep. the word out, even among a very targeted right. audience right. segment. Right. Yeah, and what about, I mean, is there enough margin there to absorb the legal fees? And he did speak to the security, but I, mm -hmm. with all the data that they're capturing, especially a camera, right. I would just imagine that, I don't know, they're yeah. going to want a pretty solid legal team. Yeah, has to be, or you're, you know, you've just ruined yeah. your product. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is great discussions. They were two unique companies with a lot going on, growing very fast. So we've got to wrap things up, but any final comments? You know, just real quick from each of you. We were saying during the break that it's really exciting to see two main companies doing oh, yeah. like something interesting, tech right. driven, right. different and yes. different and first in their market. So right. I think that's no matter where we land here, that's yeah. really exciting. Okay. And that's what we had talked about. This is the stuff we find exciting. All this talent yeah. here in Maine. Yep, you don't have to go anywhere for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Great job to our judges. And when we come back, we're going to find out who gets the green light and who's moving on. So stay with us. As a leader in Maine and New England in providing integrated accounting, consulting, and tax services to clients large and small, the team at MacPage has proven to provide innovative solutions to help us better meet our clients' needs. We enjoy the people we serve and care about the work we do. The success of our business is based upon our ability to develop quality relationships, one client at a time. MacPage. Accessible. Approachable. Accountable. Are you trying to increase sales? At Dream Local Digital, we've been helping businesses using Facebook, Google, and other online tools for over eight years. We're experts at helping small businesses because we work with them nationwide. At Hortz Roofing, we pride ourselves on doing quality roofs, not social media and direct marketing. That's why we hire the professionals at Dream Local. We'd love to help you grow your business as well. Give us a call today. When starting up my business, O oh Oysters, I was awash in legal questions and concerns. But the Preddy Flaherty team made sure that O oh Oysters is built on a strong legal foundation so I can focus on serving the best Maine oysters anywhere, anytime. At Preddy Flaherty, we partner with our clients to pursue innovation. Our business group is passionate about providing strategic legal guidance to entrepreneurs like Lucas through every stage of business development. Preddy Flaherty is a proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We're going to find out who the winner is. Judges, let us know who's moving on to the next round. And tonight's winner is Jellux. They will be moving on to the next round of competition. Thank you so much for joining us. We love your input and support. So please visit us on our website, greenlightmaine.com, and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We hope to see you next week for more Greenlight Maine right after Bill Green's Maine. Have a good night. Congratulations. Awesome job. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by Pretty Flaherty, willing to think differently. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Greenlight Maine has been a paid for presentation by the Portland Media Group.